Welcome to Crime Divers. I'm Laura. And I'm Joe. And welcome to today's episode. Hello, everybody. So, Joe, where in the world are we? We're in the USA. And your title? The Giggling Granny. Oh, the Giggling Granny. That sounds interesting. Shall we dive in? Let's dive in. So, Nan- Nancy Hazel, who was known as Nanny, was born on the 4th of November, 1905, in Blue Mountain, Alabama. Her mum was Louise Holder and her dad was James Hazel, although it's not confirmed that he was her biological dad. Okay. Like, in all the sources that I read, he's listed, listed as her dad, but then a stepdad can be listed as oh, her yeah, dad. Um, but they, I did see in a couple of sources that he and Louise had got together after Nanny was born. Right. But whatever, they were the parents yeah. and they were known as Lou and Jim. Right. So they worked and lived on a farm. Um, and it didn't take long for Lou to figure out that Jim was a bully. He had a bad temper and he would shout at her and he would beat her regularly. They went on to have four more children, a boy and three more girls. And as soon as they could walk, like all the kids, they were just put to work on the farm. Mm-hmm. And none of them were allowed to attend school regularly. He treat, Jim treated the kids the same way as he treated his wife. He would bark orders at them and he would beat them if they didn't do as they were told. So Nanny, she hated her dad for the way that he treated his family and she she spent all her time either working on the farm or looking after her siblings. On the odd occasion, she was allowed to attend lessons at school, but she had to walk like two miles there and two miles back. Oh, yeah. Um, and of course, because she hardly ever went, she, she was like miles behind all the other kids and she struggled to keep up. Yeah. And... So they bullied her about that mm-hmm. and about being so poor. And like, so she, she had no friends. Mm-hmm. When Nanny was seven, she was on a train with her family as they were on their way to visit relatives and like a tree fell onto the track. So the driver had to slam on the brakes and Nanny was kind of flung out her seat into the um, like the, the metal bar in front of her like right. she whacked her head off the... Her head. Sorry, I mean, Scottish there, didn't her, her head. Her head uh, uh, she banged her head on the metal bar in front of her. Uh-huh. And the head injury left her with permanent brain damage. Right. And for the rest of her life, like, she suffered, like, severe headaches, blackouts, depression. And she would lose her temper, like, really quickly at times. Mm-hmm. But her dad wouldn't... I mean, I mean, I'm saying she was left with permanent brain damage. I mean, I'm, I'm assuming they figured that later on. Because at the time, her dad wouldn't let her see a doctor. Right, okay. Um, because she had work on the farm to do um, and he, he, couldn't, he couldn't spare spare her he needed her on the farm so he wouldn't let her see the doctor awful. and she was seven she's whacked her head mm-hmm. her head sorry you done that again? I know she's whacked her head it's because it's like I'm just talking to you I forget I'm actually talking to more than you the head yeah um, yeah she's seven years old she's whacked her head and she's not even getting to see a doctor yeah that's pretty bad and uh, um you know, I mean, a lot of people might whack their head and be all right, but she was having symptoms, you know, mm-hmm. she was having blackouts and headaches and stuff. Yeah, so, so, quite rightly, probably needs to see a doctor. Yeah, and she turned into a horrible kid after that. She would bully her little brothers and sisters and she would beat them. I mean, she used, she used to look after them. Mm-hmm. And then she, after the accident, she just turned wow. into a horrible child, a bully. Mm-hmm. So from those few lessons at school, she did learn to read and write and she loved to read books. She would read romantic novels that her mum would, scrape together money to buy for her and that would be her escape for like from her miserable life mm-hmm. she also loved romantic magazines and she loved reading the lonely hearts column um and she would dream about how romantic her future was going to be you know she was going to find her prince charming and mm-hmm. live happily ever after mm-hmm. so even though her dad wouldn't let any of her do- his daughters wear makeup or nice clothes or go to dances or any other social events like she she was like no i'm gonna find my prince charming Fair enough, fair enough. I'll find him somewhere. Mm-hmm, fair days. I'm going to grow up at some point. Mm-hmm. So our sole mission in life was to find a man who would take her away from her unhappy existence and who would treat her like a princess, just in, mm-hmm. just like in these books and magazines. Yeah. So when Nanny was 15, her dad let her go out and find a job as the farm was in financial trouble, so the, he needed Excellent. her income. So she started to work at a linen factory and she loved it. She made friends and although she still wasn't allowed to wear makeup, she did wear clothes just like her friends. So she mm-hmm. was keeping up with the sort of fashion and stuff. Yeah. So she didn't feel left out. 
she met a guy called Charlie Braggs, who also worked at the factory, and they started dating, and after just four months, they got married. She was 16 and Charlie was 17. Yeah. But of course, this wasn't the fairy tale romance she had imagined for herself. Her dad had actually orchestrated the wedding as he just wanted to be rid of Nanny. Obviously, she mustn't have been earning, earning enough right, okay. in the factory, and he was like, do you know what? Off See you ya. Mm-hmm. Um, but Nanny was like, right, she was determined she was going to be a good wife and she was just happy to be away from her abusive dad. Mm -hmm. However, what she didn't realise at first was that Charlie's mum was going to be living with them. So that's just what you want. You get married and your in-law, your mother-in-law is going to live with you. So she was a single mother and she insisted on living with them. Um, she was overbearing and controlling and to Charlie, she came first before his wife. So Nanny had to put up with this unbearable woman Mm -hmm. who criticised everything she did and even told her what she could and couldn't do. For instance, Nanny wasn't allowed to read her romantic novels anymore. Oh, shut up. Because her mother... No, no, listen to this. The the reason for her not being allowed to listen uh, to what... Read? Read them was because the mother-in-law said it was like cheating on her husband. Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> you're reading these romance novels, so you're cheating on your husband. Oh, so that's ridiculous. It is, isn't it? Mm-hmm. And she couldn't even go to Charlie for help, because as, as I said, he put his mother first, and he would always side with her rather than his wife. Right, well, okay. Which is, that would be infuriating. Mm-hmm. So Nanny later wrote, quote, I married, as my father wished, in 1921 to a boy I only knowed for about four or five months who had no family, only a mother who was unwed and who had taken over my life completely when we were married. She never seen anything wrong with what she'd done, but she would take spells. I don't know what that means. She would not let my own mother stay all night, end quote. So she wouldn't even let her have her mum over for a sleepover. That's terrible. I know. If I was her mother, I'd be like, excuse me. Uh, that's my daughter. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If I want to come and stay with my daughter, then mm-hmm. I will. Exactly. So between 1923 and 1927, Nanny and Charlie had four daughters. So that's four four daughters in four years. Holy shit. I know. That's a lot. Melvina, Zelma, Gertrude and Florine. But by now the marriage was just awful. They didn't even like each other anymore. I don't know why they were still having sex because they just didn't like each other. Um, and Nanny, like she just started seeing other men. She's <laughs> like... Fine, fair enough. So, and the rumour... The rumour mill went in overdrive and these rumours got back to uh, Charlie. But he didn't confront Nanny. He just started seeing other women instead and would often, often like disappear for days on end. So this yeah. is, she's definitely found her Prince Charming here. Not. Nope. So Nanny was unhappy. She was stressed and she started chain smoking and drinking. She hated her husband and her mother-in-law. And she even started to resent three of her four children. She doted on her firstborn, Melvina, but with the other three, she was struggling to care for them all. She was kind of like, I've, I've had too many. Hmm. Well, yeah. I, I mean, mean, four kids in four, four years, years, that's, that's a lot. lot. Absolutely. So. I couldn't cope with that. No, no, did you? <laughs> so one day in 1927, Charlie arrived home from one of his disappearances with another woman to find that their two middle daughters, Gertrude and Zelma, had died. Oh, okay. So the local doctor was with the girls when they died and ruled both their deaths as food poisoning there and then, so there was no autopsy. Apparently they ate, ate tainted grain in their porridge that morning and died the same day. That sounds a bit extreme. <laughs> so the community rallied around and helped with whatever they could over the next few days and they praised Nanny for how well she was coping with this tragedy. Nanny wanted the funeral as soon as possible so she could lay her babies to rest and grieve for them. I mean, they must have, it must have been only, like, maybe one and two years old. Because well, remember, one after the other. Uh, you know, yeah. so this was 1927, so her oldest, Melvina, would have been four. Right. So, so the other, the, that, that was the two middle ones, so maybe three and two or yeah. one and two. Like, they would have been little. Um, so, however, Charlie wasn't so supportive of his wife as he suspected that she had poisoned the girls. Well, that kind of... Yeah, like um... I'll, I'm assuming she did, but we don't have the proof that she did. Right, okay. Um, but he refused to eat or drink anything that she served him. Mm-hmm. And it's, and soon, af- soon after the funeral for the girls, 
Charlie fled in the middle of the night and he took the oldest daughter, Melvina, with him. The one that Cheshire likes. Aye. And, but he left new, uh, Florine, she was just a, no, a newborn, mm-hmm. and he left her because... As I said, he left during the night, so she was actually asleep in Nanny's arms. She'd obviously, she fell asleep holding the baby, so right, okay. she could, he couldn't go and grab her. Right. So he took Melvina. So Nanny was devastated when she realised that her favourite daughter was gone. Mm-hmm. And the community again showered her with sympathy. And there were rumours that maybe Charlie had something to do with mm-hmm. the other girl's deaths. It was like a bit suspicious in that sense if he's the one it wasn't the i mean i don't say i know it wasn't but i mean you can see how people yeah have because that. he like they've gone and he's taken off with yeah. yeah um now that he'd taken off with the oldest but it was nothing to do with him he was just like i need to get away and i'm taking my kid with me yeah um and he maybe maybe the for with florine maybe i don't know if she was breastfeeding then maybe like she would, yeah. if if she was then he would think well she's safe because how can she poisoned her yeah, as she's breastfeeding. Yeah, couldn't care for her in the sense of maybe feeding her. Yeah. Um, so the community were amazed about how strong Nanny was and everyone loved and respected her, especially because of what this woman had been through. Mm-hmm. And this this kind of is the same all the way through. The community always loves and respects this woman mm-hmm. who, you know, is a murderer. <laughs> um, Nanny now only had one child to look after, which is what she wanted. She only wanted one child, but it was the wrong one. Yeah. She had wanted... Melvina. Uh-huh. Um, and now she was pissed off because she didn't have any money. So she ended up having to go back to work at the linen factory as she had to support Florine and Charlie's mother. So he left the mother as well. Okay. <laughs> so her mother-in-law was totally reliant on Nanny now to care for her. Especially now that Charlie had done a runner. Her health had really gone downhill and she was pretty much bedbound. Uh-huh. And she passed away in the summer of 19... 19- 27 presumably of natural causes so no questions were asked because she was elderly mm. she was ill mm, maybe, maybe she did she, <laughs> i might as well tell you that now she did okay um so the following year charlie actually brought melvina back mm-hmm. he arrived with this new, he had a new woman and she had a child of her own so he was like well Good, you know, I yeah. Don't, yeah i've got i've got a stepchild that one that'll do um so he told Nanny that he wanted his house back and he wanted a divorce. So Nanny agreed and she took Melvina and Florine and she moved back to her parents' farm. Later, Charlie said that he that he had left because he was scared of Nanny and if they didn't have children, he reckons that Nanny would have killed him. Right, OK. She didn't want to work on the farm, uh, obviously, because, you know, her dad was still just as abusive as he always had been. Mm-hmm. So she found a job in a cotton mill and her mum would look after the kids while she was at work. She hoped to find a new man, but she couldn't find one. So she eventually she put an advert in the newspaper in the Lonely Hearts column. She got plenty of replies um, and she corresponded with a few men and eventually she fell for a guy called Robert Franklin Harrison. And they got married in 1929 and moved to Jacksonville, where he was from, with Nanny's two daughters. But after just a couple of months of marriage, Nanny realised that Robert was a violent alcoholic and had a criminal history of assault charges. He would go out most nights drinking with friends and quite often ended the night in a jail cell for for fighting. So again, not the fairy tale marriage she had always hoped for. However, this marriage did last for 16 years. Um, And in 1942, Nanny's daughter Melvina she met and married a guy called Mosey Haynes and a year later she gave birth to a little boy called Robert Mm -hmm. so Nanny helped out whenever she could and she like doted on on her grandson Uh, Florine this you know um the youngest daughter she Mm -hmm. moved in with Melvina and Mosey on the pretense that it was to help look after the baby but it was actually to escape having to live with Nanny and Robert because as I said he was a violent alcoholic yeah blah 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 so Quite soon after, Melvina gave birth to a little girl, so it was quite, wasn't much a gap between her son yeah. and the daughter, and it was a hard labour, and Nanny held her hand all the way through it. Once the baby was born, Melvina was so exhausted that Nanny took the baby off her so that she could get some rest, and only a few minutes later, the baby was dead. Oh. Melvina had been pumped full of pain relief obviously through the labour mm-hmm. so she was groggy and exhausted but she could have sworn that she saw her mum stick a hat pin into the baby's skull 
but the doctors couldn't see any cause of death, so they assumed that because of the long labour, the baby had been deprived of oxygen. Right, okay. So that's how she died. And they don't prove otherwise? I can't remember. Well, I'll tell you what she was, what she did and didn't, Mm -hmm. well, what she did do at the end of it. Yeah. Um, Melvina couldn't believe that her mother would do that to her own granddaughter because... Who would believe that? Oh, yeah. Um, so she just put it down to her mind, playing tricks on her. As I said, she was groggy for the pain relief and whatnot. Yeah. Um, and Nanny was great with her son, so, you know, why would she why do would that? She do that? Yeah. yeah. And she had a really close bond with, with, her, um, with the grandson. Mm. So Melvina and Mosey, they struggled to cope with the loss of their baby, and they ended up, like, drifting apart and getting divorced. Mm -hmm. So Melvina started dating a sailor, and Nanny didn't approve at all. She saw Melvina making the same mistakes as she did. Got married young, had kids, got divorced, but someone else. Mm -hmm. She was furious about her seeing this sailor. And they had a massive argument, and Melvina left two-year-old Robert with Nanny, and she headed off for, like, a drunken night out with a sailor. And Nanny was just angry. She was angry about her own life being so shit. She was angry that Melvina's life was heading in the same direction. Mm -hmm. And that evening, in July 1945, she looked after little baby Rob, two-year-old Robert. She made him some cookies and she put him to bed. And then she went to bed herself. In the morning, she went into Robert's room and tried to wake him, but he wouldn't wake up, so she called the doctor. The doctor arrived and pronounced Robert dead. And the cause of death was asphyxia from natural causes. So in other words, what we now call SIDS or like sudden de- infant death syndrome or right. cop death. Yeah. Uh-huh. And that's what they, they put it down to. Right. So mm-hmm. a couple of months later, Nanny collected the $500 life insurance that she had taken out on Robert. Why is she taking a life insurance out on a two, our two-year-old grandson? grandson. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Come on. That's a bit suspicious, sir. Yes. Suspicious. She did. She poisoned him. <laughs> um, but again, we'll get to all that later. So as it was now in 1945 and the war was over, the country was celebrating and Nanny's husband, Robert, took every opportunity that he could to get absolutely hammered because we know he was an, al- he was an alcoholic. Yeah. One nine, one nine? No. One night, he came home and demanded sex from Nanny and she refused, so he just went ahead and raped her. Which at that time, unbelievably, it wasn't illegal to rape your wife. Okay. So she couldn't, you know, press charges yeah, yeah. or anything because it was perfectly legal, which is absolutely... There wasn't such a thing as rape yeah, yeah. in marriage, which That's is awful. absolutely ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Um, so the next day when Robert was at work, she was doing some gardening and she came across one of his moonshine bottles filled with booze. Um, he had buried it because he would always hide his drink mm-hmm. uh, because if Nanny... He knew that if Nanny found it, she would just pour it away. So mm-hmm. he buried this um, moonshine in the garden. Right. She found it, so she's like... <laughs> So she put some rat rat poison in the bottle Mm -hmm. and then put it back where she found it, knowing that sooner or later he would go back and drink it. So that same night, Nanny went off to bed before he got home from work. And when she woke up in the morning, she found him outside dead in the garden. So he'd obviously went out and... That'd been pretty quick. Yeah. Well, it's poison. (laughs) So the doctor put his death down to natural causes due to alcoholism. Mm -hmm. Nanny had washed the bottle out so it couldn't be examined for foul play, so it was assumed that he drank himself to death. Right, okay. So Nanny, as she had with the other deaths, she played the part, you know, of the the, the grieving widow. So she played the part well. Mm-hmm. She was sobbing and collapsing at the grave or whatever, and just as she had done at the other funerals. Mm-hmm. The community felt so sorry for, for this woman, like what she had gone through. Mm-hmm. Um, she was a lovely woman, you know, and she'd gone through so much. So again, they all rallied round her, doing whatever they could to help. So with Frank's life insurance, she bought some land and she got a cottage built for her. Mm-hmm. She was happy to start to start with, but then she got lonely. Still hadn't found her Prince Charming yet. Mm-hmm. So her, her daughters had both began to get suspicious about all these deaths. Mm-hmm. Um, thinking that she might be involved, so they were now like they were staying away from her. Yeah. Um. So she had that. She had no family around her now. Uh, so either. So she put an advert in the Lonely Hearts mm-hmm. column again. She got plenty of replies, and this time she met up with a guy called Arley Lanning and married him three days later. Three days. Yeah. Jesus. He lived two states over in Lexington, North Carolina, and she packed up her life in Alabama and moved in Arley's house. I Again, she land bought for her and building her own wee cottage, and then she wants to go off and live. She kept it though. She just oh, yeah. she didn't like sell it or anything. Right. 
Again, soon after the wedding, she found out that Arlie was a heavy drinker, the same as her previous husband, and he was also a womanizer, having plenty of affairs and visiting sex workers. And I'm like, well, what do you expect? You're marrying these people after days, months. Days, weeks. Days, weeks. You try, don't know them. Try getting to know them first. Yeah, like, and then you might have figured out he was a drinker <laughs> and a womanizer, and then going, actually, this is not for me. Yeah. So, Nanny, who would often disappear sometimes for months on end, saying that she was leaving him and hoping he would change, but he, he, he never did. When she di- uh, disappeared, she would go back to her, um, to her cottage and she would put ads in the Lonely Hearts and hook up with different men, like none of them knowing that she was actually a married woman. And after leaving Arlie one time, um, she w- like, she, she'd left him, but then she went back to him and she was trying her hardest to be a doting wife. She was mm-hmm. like, she did everything for him. She waited on him hand and foot, baked all his favourite pies and cakes, but one morning Nanny tried to wake him up, but he was dead. Oh. I mean, she was the doting wife. Like, she... Wh- what happened? Again, why, so, is she, why is she so cursed that everybody dies around her? So she phoned the doctor, and when he arrived, he reeled that Arlie had died of heart failure. What the doctor didn't know was that Nanny had baked him a prune pie the day before and put poison in it. So again... Everyone rallied round and she played the heartbroken widow and she even moved in with Arlie's mum after the funeral. God. And she soon soon started <coughs> Sorry. That's good. You're right? Yeah. So she soon started making inquiries about Arlie's life insurance and she was planning to sell the house that they lived in. But what she didn't know was that Arlie hadn't updated his will since they had got married and the house was left to his sister. Right. So even though Nanny automatically got his money and his possessions because she was his wife, she decided that wasn't enough, and she burned down the house so that she could claim on the insurance, because she had house insurance, that was in her name. Oh, okay. So, and then nobody clicked, <laughs> that was dodgy, you know? Of course, well, Arlie's family didn't know that she'd set the fire, it was just a, obviously a tragic accident, like, mm-hmm. um, and she continued to live with his mum, with Arlie's mum. The community, they were a bit suspicious of Nanny, so she decided that looking after his mum would be the best thing to do to make her look like the wonderful doting daughter-in-law mm-hmm. and to take the suspicion off her. Because, yeah. like, you know, if she had I, had anything I, to do with that, why would she be looking after yeah. his mother? You know, she's a wonderful woman That's worse. by doing that. So she cooked all her meals, she baked treats for her, she did all the housework, helped her get washed and dressed, and she really did play the part. But unfortunately, her mother-in-law became ill, and Nanny tried to nurse her back to health and she would feed her stewed prunes. But she soon died and no one no one now suspected Nanny because she looked after her mother-in-law right up until the end oh, yeah, course, yeah. while still grieving for her husband. Mm-hmm. So why would anybody suspect her? So once her mother-in-law was buried, Nana, Nanny just went, went back to her cottage. But she'd basically just got there when she heard that her sister Dovey was really ill. So she rushed to her bedside and found bedside and found that she was like bedridden and she didn't have long left to live. I don't know what was wrong with her, but she didn't have long left. So Nanny decided that she would speed up the process by feeding her her famous stewed prunes and Dovey died. Oh dear. So she like Nanny wondered why her parents weren't at the funeral because Dovey was still really close to them, mm-hmm. even though she wasn't. But she later found out it was because her dad had passed away. Right, That's right. why they weren't at the funeral. So she was surprisingly upset, but only because she had hated him so much that she hoped that she would get her, her revenge on him so someday. Right, okay. But she was obviously too busy killing everyone else that she hadn't got round to him yet. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So that's why she was upset. Not because she'd lost her dad. Uh, but just because she didn't actually She kill didn't him. get to do it. Right, that's, okay. Um, her mum was left with no money and Nanny was the only um, kid left that was actually financially stable. So she took her back to live with her in her cottage. Right. But Nanny still hadn't given up on finding her Prince Charming. And she joined a dating service for older people called the Diamond Circle Club. And she met a guy called Richard Morton and they got married. Luckily this time, this husband did not have a drinking problem. Oh, well, that's... But he was a cheater. God's sake. So Nanny decided, nope, this is not my Prince Charming. So she actually put an ad in the Lonely Hearts for her next man while she was still married to him. Lovely. And as her mum, Lou, was um, living with them as well, they were both an obstacle to her finding her perfect man. So she fed her mum stewed plum, uh, stewed, pr- 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 stewed 
Prince. Prince. And she died in January 1953. And Richard died three months later in May 1953 after drinking coffee laced with rat poison. For God's sake. Um, I, I, I don't know. Um, obviously, the doctors put it down to something else. So like This woman is just clearly getting away with everything. Yep. So, Nanny then married... Samuel Doss. I'm, I've lost how many times she's been married now. <laughs> well, I'm just going to tell you. Funny that. Oh. Nanny would then marry Samuel Doss in June. So only a month after Richard died, she married Samuel. This was her fifth and final husband. And he was a minister. He didn't drink. He didn't smoke. He didn't cheat. So this had to be the perfect guy, right? She's eventually right. found her Prince Charming. Uh-huh. Nope. He annoyed her because he didn't approve of the romantic novels that she liked to read. Oh, and... for the love of God. <laughs> and he was a planner. Like, every aspect of their life was planned and regimented, and he was a skinflint. Well, maybe so... if she just took time to get to know these people, she might realise that she doesn't freaking like them. <laughs> Honestly. So, I don't know. Maybe even granted her a marriage licence, you should, should say no. Like, you should have to go... Like, if you get married, like, you need to go through, like, a process of, like, well, why you want to get married? How long have you known somebody? Like, you know, you can't marry them after three days. Like, you've got to have, like, been with somebody, like, three years or something before you get married. Like, <laughs> Jesus Christ. It, it was ridiculous. Yeah, it was ridiculous. Yeah, he was he was a skinflint as well. Like, you know, he was tight with the money. So, Nanny had no luxuries or treats, and she wasn't happy with that. So, she buggered off back to her cottage. But she soon received a letter from Samuel wanting her to come back. But she wasn't impressed by this letter because he wasn't professing his undying love for her and, like, begging her to come back. Mm -hmm. He basically just said that if she came back and lived by his rules, then he would allow her access to his money so she could buy herself some nice things. Right. So she decided to go back, but only because she wanted to kill him. Right. He obviously thought everything was fine and dandy, and he kept to his word. They went to the bank together, mm. and he gave Nanny access to his money. Right. And he changed his life insurance, making Nanny the sole beneficiary if he died. Mm-hmm. I mean, does he know anything about her past? Surely not, because if he knew anything about her past, about all these other husbands, surely he wouldn't sign, you yeah. know... She obviously didn't disclose, and, and, and maybe didn't. She maybe he just wasn't aware of her before meeting her, and... <laughs> Yeah, obviously didn't know anything about her life. I think, like, getting married back then must have been really different as well because, like, I know now, you know, from being married, that when we sort of registered to get married, um, if you'd been divorced before, you had to show, um, like, the divorce... That was obviously neither me or John had been... Do- yeah. We haven't been married before, so... But the, it was one of the questions, like, you know, if you'd been divorced, you had to show proof that you'd been... Right. Must be... Um, to show that you, uh, you were legally allowed Aye. to get married, you know, so right, you'd be okay. divorced. But obviously that mustn't have happened because he would have seen... Well, yeah, how many divorces Well, no, because she never got divorced. Oh, but no. then surely you'd have to show the death certificate. So if you're saying that you're a widow, mm. surely before you can get married again, and now, I'm saying, like, maybe not back then, but surely now you would have to, sh- you'd have to show the, the death certificate, I would think. Because you have to prove that you're legally allowed to get married. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that, because to... Make sure that people are. I mean, I know people can get away with it, but to try and stop people from marrying more than one person, ma- marrying more than one person, yeah. So I'm sure it must have been really different back then. Uh, it must have been. Um, so he wasn't as easy to poison because he didn't like sweet things, but because <laughs> apparently that that's like sweet things covers the taste of the arsenic. Right. Okay. Um. So she she does she decided just to add. A little bit to his coffee every morning. So, uh, but she didn't know how long that would take to kill him. So after a few weeks, he started to feel ill. Right. So he had like stomach pain and like flu-like symptoms. So he was admitted to hospital, and he was diagnosed with a severe digestive tract tract infection. He was treated and released, but just a few days later, he was dead. Mm-hmm. So Nanny had put much more arsenic in his coffee this time, and it worked. Yeah. So the doctor came to the house and was suspicious, though, because Samuel had been treated and he was fine when he came out of hospital. So this was a sudden death. Mm -hmm. And he ordered an autopsy and the autopsy revealed a huge amount of arsenic in his system. So at last, somebody has actually ordered an autopsy. Yes, and and I suppose as the years have gone by, these things will have been more and more Mm. maybe regular that they did that with the deaths and stuff. So at last, Nanny was arrested and she was taken to the police station for questioning. 
She, of course, denied that she'd killed her husband and she kept giggling at every question that she was asked. She was like, like sort of giggling and flirting, like as if she thought that was going to... Well, she clearly thought she was going to get away with this because she'd got away with every other murder beforehand. So she probably didn't take it serious enough to think that she was like going to be in trouble. Mm. So the police looked back at Nanny's past and of course they saw all the other deaths in her family and they were like... Hold on a minute. Yeah. And I'm like, eventually you're actually deciding to investigate. So Nanny wouldn't tell them anything, but um, until they put the death sentence on the table, they were like, Mm -hmm. so she was like, ah, shit. She obviously shit herself and she confessed. Not to all the deaths, though. So she confessed to killing four of her husbands, because obviously Charlie, the first one, he he survived, she hadn't even attempted with him. So she killed four of her husbands. She killed her mum. She killed her sister. She killed her grandson. And she killed her mother-in-law. So she didn't admit... That she had killed her newborn granddaughter. No. Um, or her own two children, the two little girls. Right. So, her daughters, they weren't exhumed, but all the other bodies were exhumed. <clears throat> um, I don't know, they wouldn't have been able to, I, I'm assuming they wouldn't have been able to prove with the, the granddaughter because she wasn't poisoned, so I don't think she was exhumed. Right. Um, but the two little girls weren't for whatever reason, I don't know why. But all the other bodies, they were they were all exhumed and they were all tested for arsenic poisoning. And of course, this proved that she had killed them yeah. all. Mm-hmm. So on the 17th of May, 1955, Nanny Doss pled guilty to Samuel's murder and she was sentenced to life in prison. The state didn't pursue the death penalty because she was female. Right. Oh, okay. And she wasn't, she wasn't charged with the other murders. She was only charged with Samuel's murder. All right. I don't know if it's just because... She was sentenced to life in prison, but these days you would you would still get Just charged for all of them. But one, yeah. as I said back then, it must be different. So she, but she actually died from leukemia in the hospital ward of the Oklahoma State Penitentiary in 1965. So she only served ten years before she died. Right, okay. um, so as well as the giggling granny, because that was obviously one of her names, mm-hmm. um, the other names the press called her were the Black Widow, the Lonely Hearts Killer, and Lady Bluebeard. And apparently he was this guy in a folk's tale that kept murdering his wife. Oh, okay. So right. she... Fair days, fair days. So there you go, that is the case of Nanny Doss. The giggling nanny. The giggling granny. It was, I think she could have been called the giggling nanny as well, actually. Uh, but her name was Nanny. But, yeah, I saw yeah, her name was the Nanny. The giggling granny, although she actually made herself not be a granny because she actually oh, killed, yeah. her, she killed her two grandchildren, well, although she never admitted to oh, one of them. she got her comeuppance, but I mean... She ridiculous. didn't really get punished though, did she? She only got 10 years and then oh, she yeah. died. Yeah, and I mean, she had got away with quite a lot of murdering along the way. So, probably not quite justice it's... for all, obviously, but at least she did serve a form of punishment eventually. I'm just trying to see how old. So, she was only 50 when she died. Wow. Yeah, because she was born in 1905 and she died in 1955. So, mm. yeah, she was only 50 when she died. So,. She should have spent the less, rest of her life in prison, which mm. could have been, if she was only 50, well, for, she would have been 40 when she got put in uh, prison, she would have yeah. been 40. She potentially could have spent 40, 50 years in prison, but no, yeah. she only spent 10 because she, she died. died. No. So I just feel like she wasn't punished properly, yeah, oh, that's nobody's aye. fault. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah, I mean, it doesn't feel like justice was completely served there. No, but, but that, as I said, that was nobody's fault. I just wish she had lived longer. Yes. And, she would have had Sarah well, exactly. Or maybe if she'd been caught earlier. Yeah. But, yeah. but it's unbelievable. I mean, if that was to happen now... God, you, know. you know, like, I, mean, I don't even think you'd get away with the first one because it probably... Uh, and um, the two little girls, mm-hmm. autopsies would have been carried oh, out. Oh, yeah, 100%. Because it's not, um, you know, for two little girls that are only... Babies, basically, to both die, for them yeah. to both die on the same day. Yeah, exactly. You know, you've got <laughs> the sus- suspicions would be raised and investigations would be done. Yes, exactly. So she probably would have been caught out with the first one. Ah, exactly. With the first, well, two of them. Mm-hmm. So there you go. That's the case of Nanny Doss. So yes. thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time. See you next time. Bye.